guys, welcome back to my channel. I thought today it would be a lot of fun to just do a casual Q&A, little catch up video, super chatty. So of course, grab your coffee, your tea, whatever it is, because I'm sure this is gonna be a long one. Before we jump into it, I feel a little bit embarrassed. I've never asked this of you guys before, and obviously only do it if you feel compelled to. Um, but if you enjoy my channel and or there is a video that you find really helpful. It would mean the absolute world to me and it would really help out my channel if you shared it on Instagram or Facebook or texted a friend. <laughs> All of that little stuff really, really helps me out. If you're not following me on Instagram, I will pop my handle right here. That is where I ask for the questions. Okay, I'm gonna stop blabbing, blabbing, blabbing. Let me grab the questions. First question, tips for new stay-at-home moms, how to not go stir crazy. Oh my gosh, connect when and when, when and when, when and where you can with other humans, with other adults. So whether that be, it depends really on your needs, but if that means just a quick text to a friend, a phone call to a friend, a phone call to a parent, what I love to do, especially in the beginning when I was like newly adjusting to this life as a new mom, I was postpartum enough that I could move and take Hugo out. Any trip out was an event. So a trip to a grocery store, to the park, and those things really helped fill my cup. So I would say if it's not possible for you to go out with your little one, then maybe watching YouTube videos. I always find watching women who are in a similar position as me really, really helpful. It makes me feel a whole lot less alone. And you can always, always, always message me on Instagram, like for real. Like if you are just having a rough day or you're bored and you just wanna like message someone and chat, like I'm always available. Um, but those are all the things that I've done to help with going stir crazy. And listen, like you're just gonna have those days where you feel so isolated and so alone alone and reaching out to another friend, coworker, parent, sibling, whatever, makes all the difference. Next question, how did you guys pick Hugo's name? So I did make a video on how I felt like I got a sign from God that affirmed how we chose his name and like what what we're thinking, but when it comes to his actual, actual name, and I don't think I'd ever mentioned this before, we had a few names and I did, I did feel like his name was Hugo and I, I did feel like in my heart of hearts that that was his name, but I made the mistake of saying that name, saying Hugo to my family like months before, even before I got pregnant, mentioning the name Hugo and they didn't like it. And even though I knew in my heart that that was his name, it did crush me that like they didn't like it. So I was convincing myself the entire pregnancy of other names and that that wasn't his name. Then we had that like super serendipitous thing happen that like confirmed to me that like this is his name but and here's the thing that I, I don't think i've ever mentioned was so the day that he was born we didn't discuss names because i had a really long labor and delivery and by the time we got to the room we were exhausted so the next day march 1st jeff and i were talking about names and i said to jeff i think i really like the name theodore like let's name him theodore and Jeff was like, you know, I really like the name Hugo. And that to me just cemented it because that was those two names we, we were going back and forth with. And I think I said that I wanted to name him Theodore because I had those other voices in my head saying no one likes the name Hugo. But when Jeff said, no, I, I think we should go with Hugo, it just made my heart sing because I was like, no, you're right. Like that is his name. And even if people don't like it, they will learn to like it. This is my like little baby. And I just, I just knew it. So that's how ultimately, long story short, we picked his name. Next question, what was the hardest part of the infant toddler transition? So you're gonna think I am so silly for saying this, but I don't actually think that it was very hard. And that's because for me, the first 12 months, the infant to baby transition, the being in my belly to then being out in the world transition, those were so difficult so incredibly difficult. So now having a toddler who can communicate, who can express himself, 
even though it's not perfect right now, obviously, it's so, so much easier than when he was an infant. I had no idea what I was doing, obviously, but he also couldn't really communicate to me, right? Like as an infant, he can't say, I want a snack or I'm hungry. So it was so hard, not to mention like you guys know, Hugo was not a good sleeper. He did not like sleep through the night until he was eight, nine months old. And so now that he's sleeping through the night and he's just like a little person now. So it was it night and day really like him being a toddler is so much easier than when he was when he was little and he was a baby. Uh, I will say, and this is like the really comical part and you guys are going to think I'm being silly. He is so heavy and people laugh. He's not overweight. He's just so dense. He's so incredibly dense. He's so hard to pick up. And I would say that is the hardest part of having a toddler and having like him as a toddler is that anytime I have to pick him up, it is like I'm doing like a full on workout. He's definitely over 30 pounds. We haven't been to the doctor yet, but when he was 18 months, we went to the doctor. I'm pretty sure he was 30 pounds then. He's just so heavy. And you guys know when a toddler is throwing a tantrum and they go limp, you're trying to get them up off the floor in a store, like trying to pick him up is so hard. So I would say that's the hardest part of going when he was a baby to a toddler, although he was really heavy as a baby too. But yeah, he's just so heavy. They also said sending happy to DC vibes your way. Thank you. Next question is how are you a stay at home mom, income, etc.? So, I'm in a really fortunate place and really lucky that we financially are able to support this arrangement right now that I'm at home with Hugo and that Jeff goes to work. Um, I think it works out really well for us. I've, I've told Jeff since the beginning that being a stay-at-home mom has always been my dream. I've always wanted to stay home. I know that that's not everyone's dream. I also said to Jeff that obviously if I had to go to work, if we needed that money that like absolutely I would, but we, it just worked out that we were able to financially support me staying home. I will also mention that I do make money from YouTube. It's, it's not a lot, but it definitely helps. I make money from AdSense and I make money from sponsorships. And so all of those things help contribute to me being able to stay home. And again, like, I know that that's not everyone's dream, but especially like financially, daycare is so expensive. Nannies are so expensive. We don't have family who isn't working full time or who isn't close, who can watch Hugo. Like my in-laws are across the country and my parents work. And so it was either between sending Hugo to daycare or me staying home. And financially it made more sense for me to stay home. Okay, this one's awesome. It says, yes or no, Coco is a totally underrated but amazing Disney movie. Totally true. Yes, yes, yes. I love Coco. I can't watch that movie and not cry. It is beautiful. The music is beautiful. If you have not watched Coco, please, please, please get on it. It is such a stunning movie. What kind of ice cream? This is my kind of question. There is a Ben and Jerry's flavor and I can't remember the name right now, but it is like a vanilla ice cream that has chunks of Oreo cookie in it. It is so good. That is my favorite type of ice cream. Oh my word. What made you become vegan and what's a life goal you'd like to achieve? So I've talked a bit about uh, my transition into being vegan and why, why I'm vegan. Um, so in a nutshell, why I became vegan or what made you become vegan? It was a mix of things. It was noticing the change in my body. So after cutting out meat, after cutting out dairy, and I was living on a cruise ship at the time um, as a performer, I noticed a real difference in my energy levels and just in how my body looked. And that was really amazing. And then also just the humane aspect of it, reading more into that, sharing my thoughts with Jeff. We were sort of going through that together. That's those things all together are what made me become vegan. But I will say that it, it was a very gradual transition. It wasn't an overnight sort of thing. And then what's a life goal I'd like to achieve? Um, this is a bit of a, a tough one. I don't know. I guess I'd love for us to, well, I'd love for us to own a house. We own a condo right now, which was like such a huge life goal. I would say like, it would be lovely to have a house. Although like, would it be terrible if we never did? No, I'm a very like go with the flow type of person. And I also believe that like what's, what's what you're meant to have, you will have and what you're not meant to have, you won't. And so like, if it's not in our cards to own a house, I would, 
I would, and I know that Jeff too, like we'd love to own an apartment or some property in New York City. Um, New York City is about an hour away and we would just love to have like a pied-a-terre in the city. That way when Jeff, if Jeff is working late, he can stay there. Or if we wanna have like a long weekend in the city, we could. So I would say that's probably like a life a life goal, but also just like for everyone to always be healthy and happy and my family like is more than enough. Last few questions are uh, Disney related. So my time working for Disney. And the first one is what were some of your favorite Disney cruise itinerary slash destinations? My favorite itinerary, like guest itinerary when I was sailing as a guest and not working was definitely when I went to go visit Jeff. They, on the wonder, they were pouring out of Vancouver and they were fl flying. <laughs> they were sailing up to Alaska and that was so just like life-changing and beautiful. Alaska is such a gorgeous state, such a beautiful place. It was, it's so untouched and so pure. And I just felt like I had traveled back in time to when the world was just less developed. And it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Like that was such a magical, awe-inspiring, cruise that itinerary if you ever get the chance to like cruise through alaska definitely do it then like my favorite itinerary when i was working on the ships i would say like one of my favorites was a two-week panama canal crossing so we were moving the wonder the ship from port canaveral in florida to forget the name of the port in California. It's close to LA. It's about an hour outside of LA, but we're moving the ship. And so we got to stop in really beautiful places. I think we stopped in Aruba. We stopped in Costa Rica. That was so fun. I got to go zip lining. We went through the Panama Canal and then we stopped in Cabo and Puerto Vallarta. And it was so cool. It was so cool. Especially like going through the Panama Canal, like what a cool like once in a lifetime experience. Also, as a crew member, we, because the cruise was two weeks long, we did a lot of enhancements. So a lot of different shows, new shows, and that was so fun. Those shows were amazing. I know this is like the longest answer ever. My favorite itinerary as a crew member were definitely the three and four night cruises. So like the, the basic, like going to Nassau, out of Port Canaveral, Castaway Key, Sea Day, back to port, and then three night cruises of Nassau, Castaway Key, and then back to Port Canaveral. Those were my favorites because I am a creature of habit. I love routine. And when you are a crew member, maybe not so much now, I'm not sure, but when I was a crew member 10 years ago, we didn't have like very good access and it was so expensive um, to internet. And so the only time, and you couldn't keep your phone on because of like data roaming charges. So the only time you got to talk to your family members was on port days. So if you only had one port day, let's say in Florida a week, it was really hard. You were going through a long stretch of time, not, not feeling connected. So I loved those three and four night cruises, even though they were more work as a crew member, you're, you're doing the shows more often. You're just like always pumping out product. I loved that we were always in Florida and Port Canaveral is so great. It's set up in such a great way. It's very accommodating to crew members. So take the shuttle to Walmart or to Target, to a restaurant and just kind of feel like you were living a normal life, even though you totally weren't. So yeah, that's that's the long answer to that. The very last question is, what was your favorite Disney cruise ship to work on? I worked on the Wonder and the Dream, and between those two, my absolute favorite ship was the Wonder. That ship is always gonna hold a really, really special place in my heart. I sailed on that ship when I was 10, I think back in 1998 or 1999, um, during its inaugural year, and then getting a job on that ship was was magical and like life-changing and it's just always gonna hold a special place in my heart and logistically I just enjoyed working on the water more than the dream because it's a smaller ship so there were less guests I felt like I could make connections with people and then keep those connections throughout the cruises a little easier because there were less people now Disney I mean the quality of the Disney product and crew members are so amazing that you still get that on the bigger ships. But I just felt like, especially when I worked on them, it was just easier. Like I just saw more people more often on the smaller ships and 
I loved that the crew were just a little closer because there were less of us. I think there were under a thousand crew members. So it just felt like a little bit more of a family. I know that still sounds like a crazy amount. That still sounds like a lot, but it was just a tighter knit of people. And I just, yeah, I just love that it was, it was smaller. <laughs> everything was smaller. The ship was smaller. Everything was just more compact. So I would definitely say I mean, I loved going on the dream. I loved bringing Hugo on the dream last May. And the dream is such a cool ship and will always have a special place in my heart, but the wonder is home for me. And so I really, I really cannot wait for the day that we get to go back on, on that ship. Those are all the questions. Like I mentioned, don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you wanna be part of this next Q&A. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.